Today, I'll talk about phone and device tracking techniques that are not obvious. And some of these are things that you may not have heard of before. This kind of surveillance is generally referred to as cross device tracking. But in my mind, they're really proximity tracking tools because they only work in close proximity. However, they can be used in combination with normal internet tracking to generate even more verified identities by making device connections. Are these just useful for advertising or are there any more dark uses? To explain this, I will talk about Bluetooth beacons, Bluetooth device discovery, Wi-Fi probes, ultrasonic cross device tracking, and the address resolution protocol or ARP. All of these are examples of things that your phones use and will potentially reveal your location, connect your identity on different devices, discover what you're doing, and even de-anonymize you when doing things you think are secure. Some of these, by the way, are already used in contact tracing. Sit tight and don't go anywhere. I post my videos ahead of YouTube on the platform Odyssey, and I have a link in the description for you to follow me there in this new uncensored platform. Your phone sends and receives data that basically can be detected without using the internet. I'll generally call this category of tracking as proximity tracking because it signals when you're close to something or some signal occurs in your presence. Proximity tracking can be added to the other details about your device that can be used to confirm an identity. Proximity tracking will also indicate your current location. This can be useful to third parties because it can be combined with the other data such as IP addresses, email addresses, and so on. Data scientists call this cross device tracking because this kind of metadata can be used to match identities among multiple devices. First, I'll talk about what some of these tracking tools are, and then we'll analyze the seriousness of the threat for each. One of the most well-known uses of proximity tracking where one device is used to track another device is, of course, contact tracing. Contact tracing works by using Bluetooth to track proximity. Bluetooth works normally by activating a device search mode on one device, and then on another device, you respond by allowing discovery. The identity of a Bluetooth device is a MAC address, which is a unique identifier. If you want to understand more of how this works, look at how Bluetooth works in your car. You hit device Bluetooth discovery on your car radio. Then you will see a list of Bluetooth devices pop up, which will be all the phones that have allowed discovery. And you will also see the MAC address identifiers. Having you manually trigger Bluetooth is, however, the old way Bluetooth works. So you have to hit both search and allow Bluetooth discovery, a confirmation step on each device. Because of the desire for contact tracing in 2020, fonts will now have the ability to be automatically discoverable as it comes in contact with other Bluetooth devices that emit a signal. So what used to require active interaction from a user can now occur automatically with contact tracing. Forgetting about the claims of complete privacy with contact tracing, understand that every Bluetooth emission is just radio frequency. And the identity of the signal is always set in the standard Bluetooth way. It has the MAC address. External parties can then collect information of Bluetooth MAC addresses in the vicinity. This can be captured by any radio device that works in the Bluetooth frequency range, which is around 2.4 gigahertz, or it can be captured by some custom app in another phone. Now, this RF emission of the MAC address is a similar problem with the always-on Wi-Fi. All devices with Wi-Fi also emit what is called a Wi-Fi probe. Hackers know how to use this. Whether you like it or not, your phone sends out a Wi-Fi probe as often as several times a second, sending it out to multiple frequencies, which are the different Wi-Fi channels, and then announcing your presence with a Wi-Fi MAC address. Again, just like Bluetooth, another unique identifier is announced. Bluetooth is linked to a 5 to 10 foot range, while Wi-Fi probes are intended to be received within a 200 foot range. 
Here's another tracking tool that has been around a long time as well. It's called UXDT or ultrasound cross device tracking. This tracking requires only that an app have both a microphone and speakers active. It's an interesting approach because it's like hiding in plain sight. A speaker can emit a sound in the ultrasonic range, which is between 18 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz, certainly in the range of common microphones and speakers. But humans can't hear it because our hearing tops out at around 18 kilohertz. Most people hear from 20 hertz to near 18 kilohertz or less. Apps can listen for audio in this range and then can see if it's a UXDT message. Basically, you can subdivide this tonal range from 18 to 20 kilohertz into an alphabet and send a secret message that no human can hear. And you can even mix it with normal audible audio. So some device, even a permanently placed beacon, could be emitting this signal. Just watch your dogs if they get to be hyperactive. Let's say this emitter is placed at specific locations. If any app can capture the audio, your location will be revealed and you can't hear it. Typically, this is used by advertisers. They insert the ultrasonic message in some TV ad, and then if your phone is running some apps with ads, it can hear and translate the signal and then tell the ad company that you saw the ad. Then it will start feeding you similar ads on your phone. But since this is not detectable, someone in government, for example, could be sending this sound signal at key locations. Anyone that can intercept voice conversations or mic audio can spot you immediately. Here's another approach that can correlate devices and identities. This one is used by Facebook specifically, but can be used by anyone. If a device runs software that can trigger an ARP request message, which is address resolution protocol on a network, then ARP responds by giving a list of MAC addresses of devices in the network. This list can then be forwarded to a central database. This can then be used in conjunction with the other MAC address tracking tools I mentioned earlier to create device relationships. Another big tracking network is something called Google Beacons. Tens of millions of these devices have been shipped. And basically, a Google Beacon using a protocol called Eddystone is placed in various businesses and key locations. Google has been shipping this for free to many businesses. An iOS or Android device can then detect the presence of a beacon. And again, your location would be revealed. All these Eddystone-based beacons from Google use Bluetooth. Typically, you have to use some programming library from Google because that's the easiest way to use this. But these are Bluetooth emissions, and all phones are able to listen to Bluetooth. So there's nothing specific to them that limits it to Android. Some of these threats require some deep thinking. They're not all active at all times, and some require apps to be installed with permissions. So let's go back and analyze the threat level for each. I will list our proximity tracking tool in order of seriousness. Number one threat, Wi-Fi probes. The one that's always active are Wi-Fi probes. Your phone announces your unique Wi-Fi MAC address anywhere, and you do not need to sign into a Wi-Fi network for this to work. What makes this particularly serious is its range. It can operate within a 200-foot range with a normal Wi-Fi receiver. Someone with a more powerful receiver could, in theory, capture this transmission from a greater distance. If I were to make a guess, I would say this threat would be more common as you walk into buildings. I would imagine that the big box stores would find this of value for marketing. Government buildings and businesses may use this also to track for security. A store tracker will know, for example, that you've been to the store before and may know which aisles you tend to go to. In theory, knowing that a particular ID entered a building isn't enough data unless matched with some other data like your photo or name, but it can be combined with the next threat to make it more revealing. By the way, if your phone is turned off or in a Faraday bag, then it should not emit a Wi-Fi probe. Remember that airplane mode doesn't work. A bunch of researchers in a university detected that the probes, even with airplane mode on, are always on. They tested Androids and iOS phones. Number two threat, ARP. 
The next one that is always active as a threat is ARP, where MAC addresses are harvested from a LAN. The main culprit here is Facebook and its other platforms, WhatsApp, Instagram. Though really it can also be done by any app or PC that has network rights. This may be blocked now on iOS and I'm not sure about Android 10. However, this can be run by any PC app. In fact, I run this myself all the time with a Python app I wrote. Although ARP itself is a standard networking tool, it becomes dangerous when the information is forwarded to a third-party database, since its purpose to a tracker is to create a relationship between devices. Normally, no one sees MAC addresses since it doesn't get sent on the internet. Given other techniques available to a tracker like device fingerprints, the MAC addresses can then be connected to you and some of them will be tagged by device type. A MAC address can pinpoint a device manufacturer. This is a problem because one user on your network can reveal everyone's identity. To explain this another way, if several people in your household are using your Wi-Fi and one person has location on, and also uses an app like Facebook, then the other devices in the network will be assumed to also be in the same location if their location is not turned on. If one person is on a VPN and the other is not, and a relationship of MAC addresses is detected, then the true IP address can be inferred and all privacy is lost, because it will be assumed for all devices on the network. This is the major reason I recommend a VPN router in a household so that all are on a VPN, not just one or two people. Even your guests could destroy your identity, especially those using Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. It's done by making a connection between devices in a network. This ability to read MAC addresses is particularly dangerous because it can be stored in a big database to track device ownership and match to other metadata to confirm identities. It also creates a relationship map since it now becomes apparent which devices you are in frequent contact with. This kind of data would be explosively bad for privacy if someone sold this data to someone doing Wi-Fi probe tracking since they would be able to make sense of the MAC addresses immediately. Number 3 Threat UXDT The next one in risk level is the ultrasonic cross-device tracking UXDT. This used to be such a major threat years ago. But when this was exposed, the FTC sent warnings to 200 plus companies using this technology and many of those dropped using this. I think the current estimates, though not 100% on DEF CON, was that there are around 60 apps on Google Play using this currently, using this API, and these apps have about 2 million downloads. So it's not a big giant threat from the app point of view. You can mitigate this tracking by turning off microphone permissions. However, think about how the technology can be used beyond the usual apps. And this is what requires some thinking. A government could put temporary ultrasonic sound emitters in locations, and then any use of a voice transmission can detect if this ultrasonic sound is present. In theory, this sound can be captured even in phone calls and recordings. In the USA, the Kalia law already allows for this kind of tracking. Someone could make a movie of this being used to spot some terrorist using the phone. However, it can be used on any of us. Remember that if an ultrasonic sound is recorded and intercepted, it could have a sound identifier that is present at that location. And you would have no idea of this being used against you. I'm certain that three-letter agencies put this to use. Many of you are addicted to voice control apps like Siri, Cortana, Echo, Bixby, Google Assistant, and so on. Anytime any microphone is always on, there is the added risk of an ultrasonic signal being captured since these voice control apps store your voice recordings. And it is no secret they store it. By the way, the reverse can be done as well. Your phone could have a rogue app that can emit an ultrasonic sound that you cannot hear and someone can then find you or others around you. Not sure what the defense could be for that other than to not let apps work in the background if you're not using them. Number four threat, contact tracing using Bluetooth probes. The next level threat I see is contact tracing. I've always been bothered by the notion of relationship maps where some third party is keeping track of anyone I've been around. Often this is enough to profile my financial status, political beliefs, employment, and health. 
Though contact tracing, as explained by Google and Apple, appear to be benign, in reality, they are not. Contact tracing can, in fact, occur even without any apps or even Bluetooth, since Google and Apple have locations for every phone at all times. All they have to do is match intersections of locations. All they needed was for someone to acknowledge being infected. That was the missing step. However, Bluetooth is more accurate for short distances compared to normal location tracking, since it only works in such a short range. Unfortunately, Bluetooth allows third parties to collect data since a Bluetooth signal cannot be hidden in some app. Bluetooth is an RF emission and the emission at 2.4 GHz can be captured by anyone. So this could allow some rogue apps and rogue players to use the scan of contact data in the future for other purposes. It's early, so the intent of a third party may not be clear. Remember that Bluetooth network rights to some contact tracing app doesn't mean they're using it only in the intended way. There's a lot of other data generated here about relationships, and this could be collected on the side. Number five threat, Google Beacons. Another new Bluetooth technology that could be misused is the Google Beacon using the Eddystone protocol. Unlike contact tracing, which involves sending and receiving Bluetooth signals, the Google Beacon is receive only, which is why I ranked it lowest on the list of threats. A beacon is a fixed Bluetooth point with a fixed location in the Google database. When you approach the beacon, an app could then identify your proximity within a Bluetooth range of 5 to 10 feet. Great for example for museum tour apps. So if there's some advertising tied to this beacon, it, it could more precisely give you a context. This is also used in a security context in an office building since employers could track you moving around in a building. Beacons are just Bluetooth signals, however, so some other app could use this in a different context where the collection of beacons could be the basis of some supplementary location tracking. So these are the basic threats from proximity tracking. For the most part, a careful review of app permissions and being careful about app choices could blunt the effect of many of these. As a recommendation, where possible, choose your apps from F-Droid and run on a degoogled phone so some features like contact tracing apps do not get installed. All the ways these trackers could be used is still a mystery. Aside from advertising, can you think of ways that these trackers can be used in ingenious ways? If you have an idea, leave it in the comments below and maybe we can all learn from that. I know a lot of you watch my videos without logging into YouTube or even use Newpipe or NVIDIAs. But if you're actually on YouTube, it would really be great if you subscribed and hit that notification bell. It will be easier to find my videos and it really helps this channel. Thank you so much. Thank you also for those who support me on Patreon, my store that has my products like dGoogle phones, Bytes VPN, and Brax routers are on my store, which is linked in the description. See you next time.